Ahmad Saleh, Minister for Foreign Affairs of the State of Eritrea. Madam President, Honorable Heads of Delegation, Ladies and Gentlemen, let me join previous speakers to convey our congratulations for your election as President of the 73rd Session of the United Nations General Assembly. This forum provides annually a congen a congenial platform for the member states to broach critical issues of international peace and security and their ramifications on national and human development. In this spirit, allow me to bring to the attention of this August Assembly key matters of paramount importance to my country and our region as a whole. As you are aware, as you are all aware, Eritrea and Ethiopia have recently signed a historic peace agreement that brings to an end the dark two decades old, a chapter of war, constant tension and strife. This historic achievement, even if belated by almost 16 years, will allow both countries to funnel their resources potential and positive energy solely toward this much needed development. It has already infused hope and optimism on the peoples of both countries. It is positive dividend for regional peace and security is too palatable to merit emphasis. This is indeed attested by new frameworks of all rounded cooperation that have been set in motion in the past two months or that are on the offing at the regional level. Eritrea wishes to express its gratitude to various countries that contributed in different ways and that have demonstrated their political goodwill to the success of the historical process underway. Madam President, distinguished delegates, let me now revert to a pre, uh, pre, uh, pe perplexing injustice that has af afflicted my country for almost a decade. I am referring to the unwarranted sanctions that were imposed on Eritrea in December 2009 and 2011, respectively. With positive winds of peace flowing in our region, Several United Nations Security Council member states are these days calling for the immediate lifting of the deplorable, de deplorable sanctions. The diplomatic discourse is not, however, fully coherent. As it happens, some countries are looking for procedural and other pretexts and preconditions. The apparent aim is to move the goalpost and maintain the illegal sanctions on Eritrea. As an aggrieved party, which has stood for nine long years on the receiving end of the miscarriage of justice, Eritrea cannot and will not plead for clemency or magnanimity. The people and government of Eritrea will continue to stand for their rights until justice is achieved and wrongs made to them are redressed. Madam President, distinguished delegates, the, <clears throat> the transgressions perpetrated against Eritrea are, in many ways, <clears throat> symptomatic of the harvest and perverse power games that have primarily governed international relations in our contemporary times. The spiraling crisis, instability, wars, and conflicts that have and continue to rage 
in various parts of the world are inevitable consequences of the absence of justice. The attendant outcomes of international power imbalance when the rule of law is suppressed and supplanted by the logic of force when global power balance is compromised, the inevitable outcomes are intractable crises and escalating wars. It is, it is against this disconcerting global backdrop that Eritrea was first victimized and targeted for unlawful and unfair sanctions on 23rd December 2009. I will not bore you with details of the inconvertible facts of how and why this act was imposed, as all relevant information, including confidential uh, communications, WikiLeaks, and all, have since long been available in the public domain. However, to sum up, the interplay of forces and factors that brought about the sanctions were the following. One, the principal architects of the sanctions were previous United States administrations who felt that they could use their unassailable uh, assailable power and raw coercion to ram, to ram through the United Nations Security Council punitive measures against a small country and people to advance their misguided regional agenda. It is worth remembering here that certain officials in the United States administration had mulled imposing similar sanctions on Eritrea in 1999-2000 at the height of the border war with Ethiopia in order to, to impose asymmetric arrangements through coercive means. The fabricated charges peddled in 2009 were in fact suitable improvisations to implement a prevalent agenda. Two, the second cause for the imposition of the sanctions was the inability of the United Nations system to prevent such wrongs from happening as well as systemic flaws, political horse trading in the operations of the United Nations Security Council. Here again, one must remember the, that the United Nations Security Council had failed to take any meaningful action against Ethiopia. This was despite the fact that previous Ethiopian regimes had flagrantly violated the United, Charter, United Nations Charter and the Algiers Peace Agreement guaranteed by the same United Nations Security Council when they refused to abide by the final and binding decisions of April 13, 2002 of the Eritrea-Ethiopia Boundary Commission, the EABC. Third, the third factor in the imposition of the sanctions was the existence of governments that served the agenda of major powers. In the case of the sanctions on Eritrea, the principal ar architects restored to regional Trojan horses to imbue an African face to their resolutions. Madam President, distinguished delegates. The sanctions imposed on Eritrea for the last nine years have entailed considerable economic damage to the country and the unnecessary hardships on its people. The related campaigns of smear and defamation have inculcated immeasurable damage to the reputation of the country and to the prospects and potential of investment. Perhaps the biggest damage was the regional instability and the insecurity that this state of affairs bred and exacerbated. The actual cost anchored and the opportunities forfeited, both at the national and regional levels, are thus very huge. In the event and in light of the widely acclaimed peace and cooperation that has broken the region, certain countries to choose to ignore the stark truth and to prolong the sanctions regime in Eritrea is astounding. In the past six, six decades, the Eritrean people have waged long 
and difficult struggle to advance the cause of justice and to foster a climate that is conducive for mutual security and stability in the region. Those robust convictions and legacy have indeed enabled them to withstand all the wrongs and scars inculcated by unfair sanctions. Through characteristic uh, resilience and hard toil, they have now vanquished the injustices perpetrated on them. On, in conclusion, as I stressed earlier, the people of Eritrea have not committed a crime or transgression that impels them to seek clemency. As such, they are not only calling for the immediate rescinding of, of the sanctions, but they are also asking and deserve amends for the damages incurred and the opportunities forfeited. I thank you very much. Thank you.